Now the dental implants have become the standard of care for replacing a missing tooth, especially a single tooth after extraction, we've had to modify our technique for how we manage that socket when the tooth is removed. Previously, once the tooth was out, we'd simply cure out the site and be done. If we're not going to be placing the implant immediately at the time of extraction, we now find ourselves preparing the site for the implant placement a few months down the road by maximizing the amount of bone volume that will be available. We do this via ridge preservation grafting. What? The patient we're going to be discussing in this case is an 88-year-old female who was referred to me by her general dentist. About a week and a half previously, she had lost the PFM crown on tooth number 19 and went to her dentist who noticed that there was some recurrent decay underneath the prosthesis. Here's a periapical radiograph of the tooth and you can see that there is fairly extensive decay and widening of the periodontal ligament space around the root, especially into the furcation area. So this tooth has a pretty poor short and long-term prognosis, which is why the endodontist recommended extraction. So our treatment plan for this patient is to remove tooth number 19 as atraumatically as possible, do ridge preservation grafting at the time of extraction, and then approximately four months later, place a dental implant. Because the tooth is infected and we're gonna be placing a foreign material into the socket, that being our graft, we want to have this be as aseptic as possible, and so we're going to place the patient on some antibiotics starting two days before and to continue postoperatively. So My before stand. we take the tooth out, we want to take another look at our periapical radiograph and see what we've got in store for us. You can see that there's fairly extensive decay in the crown, and so there's always the chance that when you take the tooth out that that crown may crumble. But if you look at the roots, it's got a fairly straight distal root that does not seem to be decayed, and the mesial root does have a little bit of a gentle distal curve on it. There's also some bone loss into the furcation and some widening the periodontal ligament space. So hopefully we'll be able to use a cow horn forcep and lift this tooth out without it breaking. But So after you've given an inferior alveolar, a buccal, and a lingual nerve block with whatever local anesthetic you want, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a sulcular incision. Uh, we're going to start on the buccal and go about a half tooth on either side of tooth number 19, so on the mesial and the distal. But uh, we're going to be placing the beaks of the cow horn into the furcation. We're going to do it on the lingual side first and then stick the beaks uh, into the furcation area subperiosteally on the buccal on the buccal surface. We're going to pump the forcep up and down. What that's going to do is that's going to drive the beaks into the furcation deeper and deeper and as it does it acts as a class 1 lever which will act to hopefully lift the tooth out of the socket. Now, now that the tooth is out, our job is only a third of the way done to being finished. So I like to think of an extraction as having three components. The first is removal of the tooth itself. The second is to thoroughly debris the socket of all granulation tissue, infected tissue, uh, any debris in there that can interfere with healing or may serve as a nidus of infection uh, in the site. The third part of the procedure is to then prepare the socket for the eventual implant, and that's the ridge preservation graft, which we'll do next. Once we've completely filled the extraction socket with bone, then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to uh, take our membrane and we're going to tuck it in on the lingual into that pocket we developed. And again, remember when we're handling the membrane, we wanna use a non-toothed adsent forcep. So we're gonna put the lingual part of the membrane into that, uh, into that pocket, and then we're going to suture using the cytoplast suture. By elevating our flaps, we're actually bringing the uh, attached mucosa just a little bit more coronally. Uh, we're going to go ahead and irrigate this off real well. You can see that we've got the membrane nicely tucked uh, underneath the uh, flap of tissue on the buckle. Days. At two weeks, the cytoplast sutures come out, and then the membrane itself is taken out at six weeks. Um, usually a few weeks to a month after the membrane is removed, you find that it's epithelialized over very well with nice, healthy, keratinized mucosa, which is just ideal for when you're gonna place the implant.